Welcome back to our Lenten Reflections on the Sunday readings. Today we reflect on the second Sunday of Lent. Sometimes the events of life can be so awful that we cannot face any more bad news. We're confused by what seems to be false news. The British Prime Minister Harold Macmillan was once asked, what do you fear most Prime Minister? He answered, events, dear boy, events. The awful events of life can bring fear and apprehension. False news leads us to lose our trust in people and organisations that are so essential to a healthy society. Jesus knew that the awesome and awful events that would lead to his death would crush his followers. Seeing life simply through worldly values means we struggle to see and understand God's bigger picture. We need to see with the eyes and understand with the mind of Christ. For as St Paul tells us, for who has known the mind of the Lord? But we are the ones who have put on the mind of Christ. What joy is greater than that of experiencing Christ in his glory? Our eternal happiness one day shall consist precisely in this face-to-face -face encounter with the Lord. On Mount Tabor, Peter, James and John had been able to experience in advance this joy. We were eyewitnesses of this majesty, Peter would say. And John would say, we have seen with our eyes, we have looked upon and touched with our hands the word of life. During the Transfiguration, as at other important occasions in the Lord's earthly life, it is Peter who speaks, making himself the spokesman for the two other apostles. Peter, the one who expresses the faith of the apostles, the faith of the church. Peter recognises that this encounter is a source of a particularly meaningful faith, a step on the journey on which the Lord so patiently guides his disciples. Faith is the choice for God above and beyond visible things. Faith is belonging to him with all our being. Faith permits a person to see everything with God's eyes. Jesus openly asked them to believe in him and the apostles, after so much hesitation, will finally embrace the faith totally and irreversibly to the supreme witness of their blood, inspired by the words of the Father. This is my chosen son, listen to him. The mystery of the transfiguration may be understood as the moment in the story when Christ revealed his glory to his disciples. How is this word glory to be understood? One of the early fathers of the church, St Irenaeus said, the glory of God is man fully alive. To experience glory is to experience the living God, the personal encounter that brings life and hope to all men and women. It is at these crossroads that we become fully alive. The word transfigured comes from the Greek word to transform, literally to change into another form. In the case of the transfiguration of Jesus Christ, it means to match the outside with the reality of the inside, to change the outward so that it matches the inward reality. Jesus' divine nature was veiled in human form and the transfiguration was a glimpse of that glory. Therefore, the transfiguration of Jesus displayed the glory of God incarnate in the Son. The voice of God attesting to the truth of Jesus' sonship was the second time God's voice was heard, the first being at Jesus' baptism by John the Baptist. At this encounter on the mountain, the human outside of Jesus, God made man, will reveal the glory of God, bringing life and hope to those who would follow him. Jesus reveals his hidden divinity so that we, like Christ, may be united with our inner self, wherein the spirit of God's glory may give us courage and hope. Another father of the church, St Athanasius, said that God became man in order that man could become God. This is the true glory of God, that having created us in his image and likeness, he invites us to share his life. Please join us again after the break where we will continue our reflection on this second Sunday of Lent.
Welcome back to our Lenten Reflections, where we reflect upon the readings of the Sundays of Lent. And we continue with the second Sunday. As we share his life, see with his eyes and put on his mind, the revelation of his glory at the Transfiguration enables us to meditate on the painful, distressing and frightening events that would soon unfold enabling us to both enter into his sacrifice at Calvary, but to see beyond his passion, gaining a glimpse of the beauty that would unfold at the resurrection. In seeing beyond, we discover the big picture. We find the true meaning of our life's purpose. C.S. Lewis reflected that, I believe in the message of Christ, as I believe that the sun has risen, not only because I can see it, but because by it, I see everything else. Everything else is God's loving plan, which unfolds in the life and message of Jesus. In putting on the mind of Christ, we shall see, often through the lens of suffering, the glory that is God. The transfiguration can be understood in two words, ascent and descent. We all need to ascend the mountain like Jesus to find a place of silence, to find ourselves and listen to the voice of the Lord. This we do in prayer. So often our external prayer is simply that, external. We go through the motions, but these motions are not built on an inner truth. As Jesus showed his inner truth in a quiet place, so we all have to go to those places of silence and prayer where we can examine the gap between what we believe in our heart and what we do with our lives. This Sunday's Gospel and the last Sunday's story of the temptations in the desert are about times when he went to pray and it was in prayer that he was tested and in prayer that his glory came to life, bringing hope and courage to us all. As Jesus went up the mountain to pray, while he was praying his face changed in appearance and his clothing became dazzlingly white. This is true prayer, that when we pray, we change. For prayer does not change God, prayer changes me. It opens me up to the will of God in my life. I once heard a respected politician say, if I was not a man of prayer, I would be a very dangerous man. Jesus showed us what it is like to be a human being, where our inner spirit shapes our external actions. The glory of God is God's desire to share his very life with us. Jesus says to his Father that the glory which you have given me I have given them. God's glory, the revelation of his true self, is always a purpose and a reason that they may be one, just as we are one. This prayer of Jesus for unity and the desire for this unity in our lives is a clear sign that he wishes to live a life in the Lord, not living by double standards. The consequence of this desire is to aspire to holiness of life, to be perfect, as our Heavenly Father is perfect. This encounter with the truth sets us free to become the person God has created us to be. For this is what perfection means in the Scriptures. Perfection is like my glasses. They are perfect, for they do what they were created to do. But they can never be anything else other than a pair of glasses. For me to be perfect, I have to change. As St John Henry Newman reminds us, to live is to change. To be perfect is to have changed often. For me, to be perfect means to be myself. Not in some self-fulfilled way, but where I aspire to be the person I was created to be, as revealed to me through the glory of God. For the finding of God and the finding of myself is the same event. Meeting God in prayer inspires us anew to descend the mountain and return to the plain, where we meet our brothers and sisters weighed down by fatigue, sickness, injustice, ignorance, poverty both material and spiritual. To our brothers and sisters in difficulty we are called to bear the fruit of that experience with God by which sharing the grace we have received we will hear the word of Jesus when we listen to the words and carry it in our hearts this word will grow. The word of Christ grows in us when we proclaim it, when we give it to others, 
And this is what Christian life is about. It is a mission for the whole church, for all the baptised, for us all. Listen to Jesus and offer him to others. The Transfiguration marks a decisive moment in the ministry of Jesus. It is an event which strengthens the faith in the disciples' hearts, preparing them for the tragedy of the cross, but heralding the glory of the resurrection. St John Paul reminds us that this mystery is constantly relived by the church, where like the three chosen disciples, the church contemplates the transfigured face of Christ in order to be confirmed in faith and to avoid being dismayed when we see his disfigured face on the cross. We share in his mystery and are surrounded by his light, a light that shines on us all, leading us to discover in him the ultimate meaning of our lives until we are able to say with the apostles, for me to live is Christ. Thank you for joining us for these reflections on the readings of the second Sunday of Lent. Please join us next time as we continue our reflection on the third Sunday of Lent.